So once you've entered all your scenes into the breakdown pages of EP scheduling, the next thing to do is look at the schedule because the schedule now is going to appear in scene order. That's actually a very useful version because when you're looking at a shooting schedule, a lot of times you'll have to refer back to the order in which the scenes appear. When you're looking at a shooting schedule, you may actually need to see it in story order. In Movie Magic, there are multiple versions you could save. You could save story order, you could have shooting order, and those can coexist in EP scheduling because you're allowed to save multiple strip boards. So, first thing you can observe is that there are multiple colors for each movie strip. The way it works is this. There are four main colors that you're going to work with. White for daylight interior, yellow for daylight exterior, blue for nighttime interior, and green for nighttime exterior. The other strips you're going to see are the end of the day and banners that you're allowed to add where you can add custom data. Now visually, when you're looking at this, it seems like you'd want to put the end of the day note at the beginning of the day to say here's day one and then show day one. Unfortunately that's just not how the program's designed and um, there's ways to customize it a little bit but just be aware of that. Now looking at my strip board from left to right I've customized a few things so your template may look a little different. In the first column I have the page count so you'll see four eighths of a page, three eighths of a page. These are just literally the number of inches to the bottom of the page and for the most part you can eyeball this. So next you have your scene number that goes into this column. The next one over is going to list exterior or interior and it's going to right below that show day or night. And those two fields are the ones that determine the color. If you change any one of those fields in the breakdown page that corresponds, you'll see that the color will change accordingly. The next line you'll see the set that's named in the breakdown page show up here. It usually makes sense to have a very concise name that describes the set. And as mentioned earlier, it makes sense to have something that's distinctive, but yet not too long. In the next line down, you'll see it's going to actually describe the scene, and that's the area we typed earlier called the synopsis. Notice how it actually can run out of room, and the field here is a lot smaller. Next column over is actually a numeric indication of which actors are going to be working in the scene. So my main actor is often going to get the number one, uh, other actors two, three, four, by indicating it here, it's just basically a shorthand that helps people see who's going to work on which day. A little bit over from that, I actually list the background actors and the quantity, and that's a feature that you can customize in Movie Magic, but I believe that the default templates do not have that built in. And in particular, if you have a scene with 100 extras, you're going to want to put that on the schedule so that everyone's aware it affects catering right down to the parking lot. How are you going to fit 100 cars plus 45 crew members and so on? Uh, when you're only really shooting all the other days with about you know 45 crew members in general so that's really the idea of this whole process is to communicate to people what they should be ready for it might be something that's gonna happen in a few days or a few weeks or the tomorrow but essentially it's a workflow and this is your business plan now that we've described what we're looking at it's time to actually take this idea and put it in a shooting order it's pretty well-known information that movies shoot out of continuity order, meaning that they might shoot scene 27 and 39 in the same day and skip around, uh, all mostly because you're trying to shoot out a location, be done with it, and then move to the next one. So before you proceed dragging strips around, you're going to want to go to the menu item called Stripboard Manager, and there you're going to duplicate your story order script, rename it, and now call it Shooting Order. Once you've done that, go back to the strip board, pull down the new strip board you created, and it's time to start dragging and dropping. The idea now is to group all your scenes into their common items. The way to arrange strips on a strip board is to start by grouping things. So all your sets of a certain kind are going to be in one area. All of a bedroom, say, is going to be shot out. Everything that happens in the park is going to be shot out. So the idea is to shoot a set entirely and never have to go back to it. It's one of the biggest errors that filmmakers do is having to return back to set because a lot of times that location is just going to look different. Maybe it's not available. Maybe the homeowner thinks that it's worth three times the amount it was the first time you shot there. So you really want to be able to be done with it completely. So within those sets, next you want to arrange by interior exterior. Usually if you need exterior shots and it's early in the week, you're going to be shooting those 
during the daytime, assuming it's a daytime establishing shot or a scene that just happens to take place outside. Then you're going to shoot your stuff inside and then the location is going to be done unless you need to shoot some more stuff that's outside at night. Anytime interior, you're going to have daylight scenes and nighttime scenes. Generally, you're going to shoot your daytime stuff first, your nighttime stuff second, but even if it's nighttime outside, you're just going to mask the windows. That's most common and most efficient. Now that you've put all your scenes in the order of priority, you can certainly and should put all your scenes in numerical order for whatever remains. Of course, that's going to help with the momentum of the actors, the continuity of the story, and while a lot of people want to shoot in continuity entirely throughout the whole movie, it's just not practical, but here's where it really does happen. It's honestly up to the director at that point to throttle the actors in the story to be at the levels that they need to be. And to shoot in continuity really can cost the director his story because he's just not shooting as much film. He's just not shooting as much actor performance. The company's changing the locations a lot. It's just not the best way to make a film, and most filmmakers will not shoot in continuity order even though it's an impulse. It's certainly not the best 9 out of 10 times. Whether it's a big budget or a small budget, most schedules are going to generally flow in the same way. Often you'll find that it's cheaper to actually have an actor sit around for a week than to pay for the overtime to move in and out of a location and any overtime for the crew. And trust me, every actor is going to want to have the schedule built around them, so it's just a good way to open up a can of worms. Once the flow of the schedule makes sense, then it's time to insert your day breaks, put in any sort of things worth mentioning, like major company moves or anything else that can take up a lot of time. You might want to tag second unit items. You might want to also put banners for when holidays occur. And in EP scheduling, you're going to have to look at the menu in order to pull down the calendar area and adjust that to make it work for your start days and your finish days. There's a lot more detail to know, and you're, of course, going to find that stuff in the manual, but hopefully this kind of gives you a very good oversight of what you need to do in order to schedule a movie. Hopefully at this point, your schedule is locked, your script is locked, no scene numbers are going to change, because the next step is going to be budgeting. Any mistakes that you've made up to this point are going to have to be corrected in first the final draft document, and then the EP scheduling document, and that's why you really want to work meticulously all the way through.